all the stuff in verse 16 is a shadow of the reality, which is who? Christ. Yeah. This is or where maybe... Yeah, and I don't know if, if C.S. Lewis got his uh, his line from this verse also, but he said, you know, I thought I thought uh, Christianity was a, a place that you go, right? Referring to a local church. I thought Christianity was a place that you go, but I, I discovered it was a person that you know. The reality, it's not in verse uh, 16, all the things that you do and don't do. These rituals, right? That's what verse 16 is talking about. All these rituals of, um, of, of festivals and the new moon celebration and keeping the Sabbath day and all, all the rules, all those things only pointed to, right? They were just a shadow. They were, they were intended to point to Christ, verse 17, just like creation. Creation is intended to point to the creator, right? The one who, who created. The creation was never intended to be an end in itself where we worship the mountain or the stars or the sun or the moon. It was always intended to point to something like uh, something greater, like uh, the seasons, this clockwork of of the seasons as it rolls around every year is intended to point to the clock maker or the watch maker the seasons were never intended to be worshiped themselves they were always intended to point to this is what romans teaches and so here in colossians Two, and we're in. We're looking at verse sixteen, and Paul says, "Don't don't let people judge you by what you eat or drink. Right? You got to eat the right things, and you got to you can't drink this, and you can't eat eat that. You got to be a good Jew, right? That's what he's saying. They um, they were intended to to point to Jesus, uh, and what you eat or what you drink, or regard to religious festivals and the new moon celebration or the Sabbath day." Verse, verse 17 says, these are only a shadow. So they, so the, so they're, they were, the, the rules, the religious, the Jewish rules that were, did, did God speak those rules into, into them? You mean, did he tell them to do it? Yeah. Or did they? create those on their own or were those, were those rules those were given by God I believe so in the Old Testament okay so, okay. so he, yeah okay that's what I would, so but there also there's a prophecy of Jesus throughout the Old Testament mm -hmm. starting, in, there, starting in Genesis does it talk of, does it say because God gave the rules does it, and then in the prophecy of Jesus, does it allude to that this Messiah would, is there any, I'm curious if it's in there where it's like, it, it'll be through him, not these rules. Did anybody pick up on that back then, or was it ever prophesied? Is that the word? Yeah. That way. Yeah, that's the word. And does, that, does that make sense what I'm it's saying? It's a great question. It's a great, it's an insightful question because, and the answer is yes. Your, your question was, did anybody pick up on it? And the answer is yes, because um, uh, there are those who saw Jesus coming, like John the Baptist, and said, hey, there's the Son of God, the, the, so, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And, so, and go ahead. Uh, just, so if they were, if they were to pick up like in the Old Testament that it was coming, that Jesus was coming, and that it would be through Him, not through the rules, could 
should they go ahead and start and stop obeying? Could they go ahead and start worshiping Jesus and not going through the rules, even though it hadn't happened yet? Um, I think uh, even though it hadn't happened yet, they would be glad that it was coming, but they didn't know, even though they were told he's not, in, in Isaiah 53, he's not going to be a big, strong King David. He's not, I mean, King Saul, he's not going to be um, on the outward appearance. He's not going to look like a great ruler. So don't be sidetracked looking, looking for someone, you know, who, which they they were looking for someone to deliver them from Roman oppression. So they were looking for a ruler. But Isaiah 53 is saying, no, he's going to be meek and lowly. And, and if you're not careful, you're going to miss him. It, it, it's almost like, like, why did Jesus speak in parables so much? And, and the answer to both of these, your question, and, and why did Jesus speak in parables is because um, he's, he's actually just weeding out if you will, the people who only only wanted Jesus as a yes man, and only wanted someone to come in a in a, in a military fashion, uh, someone to come in and do what they wanted done, which is physical obliteration of the Romans, rather than uh, what God wanted done, which is spiritual um, healing uh, of of our heart and our sin condition. So, what a great great question. <laughs> Is that, does that make sense what I was asking, what I was it trying makes, to say? It makes that? perfect sense. And I had never thought about that uh, before. And then I guess part of that question was if someone, if someone had realized it and started worshiping Jesus who hadn't and understood that it, salvation was through him and not through keeping the rules, but at the time the rules were still in place given by God. So he those were still his orders until, and so would they be, would it be, would they be in the wrong in God's eyes? I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a ridiculous thought, I guess. No, but no, it's something, it's no. Not, it kind of just, this is, this what, is a great conversation to have, uh, Alan, because, um, these people who were, um, who God told to have these festivals to remember the, um, remember the crossing of the, of the Red Sea. I mean, God told them to remember these things. Well, um, what they did was they began, um, to, um, the original message, which was these things were supposed to point to the coming Messiah, they began to slowly get their eyes off of that. It's like the the the, the Pharisees had these. Jesus had uh, God had the original uh, commandments, but then the Pharisees and the religious people began to put all these other extra um, stipulations around it that they missed the original intent, which was God uh, for uh, to, to be loving God. And they started keeping rules rather than loving God. It's almost like they, they kept the, uh, the letter of the law so hard and fast that they missed the, the spirit of the law, which was to be in love with, with, uh, with God. And so that's why here in Colossians, he's saying, stop letting people judge you because you don't go because you could you miss the sabbath or you 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 did you did some kind of work on the sabbath some of those things that they've put in place are men's rules and so don't be sidetracked by men's rules of outward outward performance don't be sidetracked by outward um show of your spiritual spirituality and so he's he's saying the the reality is found in the man Jesus. And so like these new moon celebrations and Sabbath, these are only a shadow. Um, they point they're pointing to something greater. 
things that were to come. And then he says, the reality, however, is found in Christ. Okay? So that's a great question. And, and further explanation is we're, we're the same way. This is, this is why we, we say you can, you can go to, um, uh, just because you, uh, um, you go to church don't make you a Christian. Just because a horse walks into, um, I mean, you, you walk into a bar, don't make you a horse. I mean, we can go and we can sit, sit and listen to the gospel year after year after year. And we get sidetracked by the choir or by the robes that they're wearing or the robes that they're not wearing or the color of the carpet or the, or the, or the chandeliers or something. We get sidetracked by the preacher goes past 12 o'clock. I mean, we get sidetracked with these petty, petty little arguments and, and we miss the gospel. We miss the, the, the message that we're, we're hope, we hope is heard. And that's what happens here. Pete, the, like an overall statement about this, Alan, is that people are sidetracked by... Um, external the external trappings like smoke machines and 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 the words on a screen behind the the guys who and the girls who are singing right and the and the the light show that comes on sunday morning right in some contemporary churches we get sidetracked by those um things that are supposed to be on the periphery on the outside and we miss the actual message. And just so just like these people, the, the people you're referring to in the Old Testament, they did it. These people, Paul is telling, hey, don't be sidetracked by the new moon festival and the Sabbath day observance and what you eat or what you drink. The reality is, is found in a relationship with Christ. So there, today we're just as bad as those people we're just like them. We're human. That's the human condition. The human condition is to be sidetracked. The human condition is to be inter entertained, right? The human condition, uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 and 4, is to have my ears tickled. I want to go to that church where, the, where that preacher uh, makes me laugh, makes me feel good. I mean, that's the human condition. And and uh, and, and Paul is telling the people here in Colossae, hey, man, the, the thing you need to focus on and not be sidetracked from is uh, is Christ himself. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I've got to jump. <laughs> <laughs>